Hey everyone, Shark here with another 1v1 for you. This time on the map Simwa, the KOTU classic now adapted for Company of Heroes 3. This is an epic game between a couple of high skill players with a spectacular twist at the end that I definitely didn't see coming. Playing as the Axis, we have Canamix from France. He's a number 247 ranked Wehrmacht player using the Luftwaffe battle group. And then playing as the Allies, we have good old Seppis, a friend of mine from the Czech Republic. He's ranked number 197 with the Brits, and he'll be playing as the Air and Sea battle group. As with some of my other previous casts, one of the players is going to join me for the post-match discussion, so don't miss that for some additional tactical analysis. As always, thanks for watching, and with that, we'll roll on to the match. Alright everyone, so here we are on Samoa. I got Canamix playing as the Wehrmacht at the bottom of the map right now on the west side. And then I've got Seppis on the east side of the map at the top of the screen playing as the Brits. So Canamex is going to lock in Luftwaffe already, and he's going to throw his first squad of Falchion Pioneers uh, on Seppis's south side cutoff. So I'll be honest, one of the things I'm going to look for while casting this game is how these guys play this map. I have not had a lot of success on this map. I don't really like the big uh, water features here that block retreat paths and, and result in some wonkiness. So it'll be interesting to see how some higher level players deal with this. Ketten cried out for Canamix, and he's going with the fighting position right here on the cutoff, which can be really, really powerful. It, I don't know if you all remember when they added uh, the coastal reserves, they also added significant bonuses to infantry and garrisons to include the fighting position. So increased rate of fire, increased accuracy, reduced damage, etc. It's better than just being in a normal building. Seppis going for a second sapper and then a mortar. And I think he's just anticipating the MG42. Uh, unless he sees this already. Mortar is set up. Seppis being very kind of conservative with his capping. Uh, while Canamix is being very aggressive and pushing through the center of the map. This makes sense because the Kettenkrad allows him to cap on the flanks relatively easily while focusing his combat power in the middle. Now dropping another Falchion Pioneer on Seppis' medium fuel. Seppis finds the fighting position immediately begins bombarding with a mortar. These Falchion Pioneers here on this fuel are going to be a problem. Infantry section on the way out now for Seppis. And he's going to decap. Uh, this cutoff here and now he can use the fighting position at least they're neutral I remember the British trenches from Co 2 with the uh, the magical pass key on them that wouldn't let uh, other armies use them But it looks like at least initially Canamex is gonna have a big fuel advantage He finally gets his tier one out. So we'll see where he goes Sappers against pioneers on the north side of the map. Yep, and the pioneers retreat Sappers against Falchion pioneers and the mortar, yep, the mortar swings engagement. Otherwise, I, I honestly favor the Falchion Pioneers there. Second infantry section coming out for Seppis. And this is an interesting engagement. This, I think, is very RNG heavy. Seppis prevents the full capture. But the Falchion Pioneer is doing a lot of damage and forcing the infantry section to retreat. Now he's going to use the mortar to cap this fuel. And then sappers to cap this. More Falchion Pioneers coming in on the floor here. So Canamix trying to be very aggressive, playing the resource game early. And this is the advantage of the Luftwaffe company or battle group. You can put your opponent on the back foot as long as you can keep your Falchion Pioneers on the field. And at Vet 1, the Falchion Pioneers get the ability for uh, the passive heal ability, which helps them stay on the field much longer as long as they don't drop models. Uh, Kettenkrod doing great work over here, capping up the entire south side of the map, and now going to push on Seppis' medium fuel. Seppis pushing through the center of the map with his sappers, so he's going to cap up the center and actually maintains the VP advantage for right now. Falchion Pioneers come out. Sappers try to close the distance, but they're going to take a lot of damage before they do. Two infantry sections on the north side of the map push the Falchion Pioneers back. And Sapper forced to retreat. Garrison not protected enough from the Falchion Pioneers. 
So three Falsham Pioneers, and that's a lot of utility for Cannon Mix as well. Falsham Pioneers are really, really good units. Infantry section hops in the garrison, sappers close the distance. This is a good way to approach this engagement. And the other squad of Falsham Pioneers forced to retreat. But Seppus can get on their retreat path and maybe do some additional damage here. No, but uneven, unable to even get one model to drop. Now, Kettenkrod, capping that cutoff again and now going to plant a mine. Meanwhile, Seppus continues to try to push off all of the capping that's going on. Now you see a dingo coming out for Seppus. Now the dingo will survive this mine, uh, but it's not going to have a whole lot of health left. Yep. So good decision to use the mine there by Canamix. Infantry section gets into the church, wins that engagement. So Seppus playing catch up on the resource side. He's got sappers capping some munitions over here in the northwest corner of the map. Man, that dingo, he finally got it out and immediately it has an engine crit. Uh, and so he's going to have to wait for sappers to get back to the headquarters to, to get full health. You know, Kenamix now going for the Luftwaffe company and getting his first squad of Jaegers out. Seppus has chosen the air and sea battle group, so he'll have access to the commandos. But has otherwise not teched up. And he's going to need some AT capability. One of his infantry sections has a recce package. The other unupgraded, but I, I start to worry about Werbel wins, and it, we'll see when he actually sees the Jaegers. They've just hit the field, but that's going to be the first indicator that he needs to worry about Werbel wins. Uh, unfortunately, Kenamix has had really good fuel control. Right now, it's even, so the Werbel wins not very far off. Ooh, three squads of Falsh and Pios. One, not only are they going to do a lot of damage here, but you have to worry about their ability to throw satchels. Jaegers come up and immediately get Panzer Shreks. Falsham Pioneers not dropping very many models. Yep, infantry section forced to retreat. And honestly, at risk of being uh, run down by this Falsham Pio blob. <laughs> On retreat changes uh, the retreat path. And it looks like that if two sections will get away, the four-man section should definitely get away. Now a squad of commandos here from Seppus. And they will do really well against these Falsham Pios at close range. Yep. And Dingo back on the field, finally at full health, prevents the cap at the center. They do have to be careful with these uh, Jaeger Shreks. Commandos should do fairly well against the, the Jaegers, especially with the Shrek upgrade. Now, Falsham Pioneer, or excuse me, Falsham Jaeger is dropped in again on this big fuel uh, for Seppis. So Dingo will pursue, but you have to be careful. The Falsham Jaeger do have access to the Panzerfaust. So they could end up smoking this Dingo relatively quickly. Infantry sections come up to support, just trying to prevent the decap of that fuel. Dingo backs off. Yep, and the Falsham Jaeger is forced to retreat. So good reaction. Dingo gets some veterancy as well. And now with the commandos capping this cutoff on the north side of the map. The grenade goes in. Uh, poorly timed commandos forced to retreat. Oh, Dingo will go down here to the pioneers. Oh no, the infantry section has forced it off. But it doesn't look like anything will clean up the pioneers on retreat. Ket and Krod now vet two thanks to the mine, so it'll camouflage as it's stationary. Canamex already has a hundred fuel, so he can easily get the upgrade to the Luftwaffe company. Oh, and now we're starting to see the GB-39 grenade launchers on the Falsham Pios. That 
is going to chunk down these infantry sections really quickly and also provide some damage against light vehicles. Sep is focusing on that squad, but taking uh, some pretty significant damage. Now you see him doing little mini dodges. That squad forced to retreat, and now it's a much more reasonable engagement. Now Sapper is moving up to challenge the Jaegers, and the Mortar providing some support as well. Sepp is techs up to tier 2, and gets a medical tent as well in the headquarters. Jaegers taking a lot of damage, but not dropping any models. Wow, and they'll get away with just a, a pretty precipitous drop in health. Sepp is now with the Vickers HMG out, probably to help control this Falchion Jaeger blob. Or Falchion Pioneer blob, excuse me. And speaking of, here come the Falchion Jaegers. But they're gonna... Well, and the machine gun wisely retreats. The Falchion Jaegers put their grenade away and now pursue the infantry sections here. Who then retreat. Dingo back at full health. Oh, and here's the sticky grenade onto the Kettenkrod. And the commandos ambush the Kettenkrod and knock it out. That's going to help uh, significantly Seppis manage some of this uh, some of this capping power. Dingo is going to kite the Falsham Magus here. And now an another section of commandos coming in. I think these are the LMG commandos. Oh, Panzerfaust comes in on the Dingo. Oh, and it's done. Yeah, FG-42 is doing good damage at range. LMG commandos here, another good counter to this uh, Axis infantry, especially the Jaegers. So the combination of LMG commandos and standard commandos, except this uses them right, he should be able to, yep. He's going to do a great job forcing up the Axis infantry. Meanwhile, Canamix, instead of going for the Luftwaffe company upgrade in the Wurbles, has, has gotten to tier 4 already. Again, good fuel control. He's got a significant amount of manpower. He has the ability to get martyrs out, but without side he won't be able to get the AT guns. And and personally, I'm concerned about martyrs on this map because of the kind of the design, the pathing, uh, and the sight blockers. I feel like martyrs would have a hard time countering vehicles, especially something like uh, crusaders that move much quicker. Falchion Jaegers try to cap the fuel and are forced off by the infantry sections. Now all these Falchion Pioneer uh, upgraded with the GB-39s. And they're going to try to main maintain capping pressure. Second squad of Jaegers out now. And I think that's going to be Canamix's answer to the British vehicles. Uh, and potential for heavy British armor is getting Shrek's, uh, Jaeger Shreks out. Right, naval blockade used to prevent capture of a point, but I'm not entirely sure which one they used it on. Oh. LMG commandos force off the uh, Falchion Pioneers. And now, as Canamix tries to move out of his, his base, this Vickers doing a lot of work to kind of pin them down with support from the commandos, and now you see the challenge of this map, if your opponent controls your exit point, uh, they can do a lot of damage and force you to spend a lot of time in your base. Sepp is making good use of this, uh, and he's going to regain a lot of the map here, with the exception of this VP. Right now, victory points very even. KD pretty even, though slightly in Sepp's favor. The commandos, right, they he uh, have that passive healing that's super helpful in keeping them on the field. Falsham Jaegers attacking at range, do a good job of kiting, and the commandos uh, will use hold fire to get camouflage and in cover and retreat back to the support of the Vickers. Now a six pounder AT gun coming out for Seppis, I think this is smart. He's got to be worried about vehicles, but Canamix instead is going to get a sniper out, I think, to try to bleed some of these commandos. LMG commando is going to do a lot of work to these Falsham Pioneers. So now I'm interested to see how Canamix employs this sniper. Oh, grenade in on the Jaegers does a lot of damage. First sniper shot drops a commando. And this is smart. Using the Falsham Jaegers up front, right? They have a Panzerfaust, they have grenades, they operate in cover. So providing a little bit of cover for the sniper. 
The sniper trying to attrit the Vickers. Sapper is challenging Falchion Pioneers and Sep is doing a good job in the middle of these engagements. Uh, taking away some of the map control that Canamix was able to get sooner. Sniper's going to move up. He doesn't see these commandos here who are on hold fire. And this is an opportunity for an ambush. Oh, and they go for the sniper. Sniper retreats. Takes a bunch of damage, but it looks like the sniper will get away. And the commandos instead forced to retreat. <laughs> Cephas. It was a good attempt. <clears throat> Falsham Jaeger FG42s good at pretty much all ranges, uh, and so they're going to be really, really effective infantry for Canamix, especially as they vet up. Interesting though, the the commitment to the sniper, you kind of wonder uh, what he's going to bring out in terms of vehicles. Bring up reserves. What he really lacks right now is hard AT. He's got one squad of Jaegers with Shrek, one squad of Jaegers without an upgrade. He's got a couple squads of Falchion Pios with the GV39s, but those aren't going to do anything to, to, to real tanks. And so I wonder what his uh, thought process is. You know, with this commander, the best AT he has are either Stugs or Panzer IV. And so his late game AT options right now are relatively limited, uh, especially once you start to see stuff like the Matilda come out. Yeah. Ju87 strafing run forces the, H the Vickers to retreat. Tank Depot out, and looks like a Crusader on the way for Cephas. Infantry sections in contact with Falsham Pioneers. Falsham Jaeger is on their retreat path. P4 hits the field. Oh, and now Falsham Jaeger is in this fighting position. It's a great spot for him. They do a lot of damage to those sappers. But don't drop any of the models. Ooh, Rifle Grenade does a lot of damage, but again, doesn't drop a model. And now Jaegers, second squad of Jaegers has the Shrex upgraded. No, I'm sorry, they don't. And now using this garrison, trying to use Cephas' technique of uh, guarding the cutoff against him. Here comes the P4 to support their push. Cephas' AT gun currently out of position. Sniper moving up to support as well. Crusader hits the field. And so now we see a showdown, this time on Sepis' base exit. Meanwhile, he's got a commando, uh, we'll call it a commando group, with some sappers trying to capture and wrap around. Sniper, yeah, retreats, not in cover, so not camouflage, and puts it at risk from the Crusader. Six pounder in the back, just a little bit too far back to support the P4. P4 bounces the first shot from the Crusader, but then uh, takes some damage on the second and the third. Now here's the six pounder. Oh, commandos annihilate some Pioneer infantry on the north side of the map. Panzer IV are actually in some danger here. These Flushman Pioneers also have to worry about getting overrun. And the Panzer IV just taking too many hits from the AT gun and the Crusader forced to back up. And this is where, against these infantry, a Brumbear would be nice, but once the British tanks start hitting the field, uh, you need someone that can deal with the armor. We have territory cut off from supply. Now, Stoss Troopin being built to try to deal with the commandos. Quite the mix of infantry here from Canamex. Right, one infantry force pushes off the LMG commandos. Sniper headed back out onto the field. With all the Falsham Pioneers on the field, this Panzer IV should get repaired relatively quickly. And Canamix doing a great job capping up the per uh, the periphery of the map here. As you can see in the last couple of minutes, he's really evened out the KD. And now Stoss Troopin hit the field as well. Oh, these uh, Jaegers don't have Shrex and they're forced to retreat by the Crusader, Sapper, and Vickers. And here we see an infantry engagement setting up. Seppis doing his best to try to knock out the sniper. He'll force it to retreat, but won't get enough damage off. Now instead he'll force the Jaegers to retreat. Sauce Troopin coming out to support. 
And they're at the right range to do a lot of damage to these commandos. The Crusader comes in. Oh, the Crusader and the Mortar are chunking down the Sauce Troop and Commander's in cover. Sauce Troop and Force to retreat and lose an additional model. P4 almost fully repaired, now coming out onto the field. But the Six Pounder here is here to support the Crusader. Commando is working on the Falsh Jaegers. Panzer IV really beat up by the Six Pounder, but the infantry are in there to support and will do some damage to that Six Pounder as well. Ooh. Panzer IV just escapes. That AT gun is at the risk of getting knocked out by the sniper. Yep. And there it goes. One shot kills the last model and AT gun decrewed. Crusader forced to back off by the Jaeger Shreks. Except is still trying to use hold fire on his commandos to knock out that sniper. Instead, the Jaeger Shrex will target the six pounder. Sep is getting another Crusader out now. Sappers forced to retreat on the south side of the map. The good engagement for Sepis. He loses the AT gun, but he forces the P4 right back off the field. And here it comes starting to move, but it's low enough health that the commandos get their sticky grenade off. They could knock it out. And here's the Crusader. Ooh. Chunks down these Falsham Pioneers. It's not going to chase. There's a lot of damage, but no model drops again. LMG commandos uh, in ambush position waiting for the sniper to come out. Mortar is going to get forced off uh, by the Falsham Miggers and the Stoss Troop in here. Another squad of sappers coming out for Sethus. Two Crusaders now in position. LMG Commando is discovered, so they won't be able to ambush the sniper. But these two Crusaders are going to do a lot of damage to these infantry. Canamix going for the infantry reserves, the passive upgrade to reduce his uh, manpower bleed. Second Panzer IV hits the field. Seth is kiting the Fulcrum Pioneers with the Crusaders and using the Vickers to suppress them as they advance. Now Jaeger Shrek's in place. Vickers doing some damage to the Sauce Troop, but I think they'll win this engagement. Oh, an artillery now coming in. The Recky artillery coming in on the church. The Sauce Troop in force to back up. Now both P4s. Going and, and focusing on the north side of the map here, staying away from the Crusaders. Sniper in support. Sep is repairing here in the center of the map as he heals his infantry up to full. And the P4s are going to settle on the north side of the map, and I imagine focus on uh, capping this high munitions point in the VP, relieve some of the VP pressure, but in all honesty, VPs are still very even. Crusader takes a shot, immediately backs up to avoid damage from the GB-39. Falsham Pioneers force to retreat, and now the Falsham Jaeger is going to get chunked down here. They decap the center. Ooh, perilously close to going down. But they'll get out of there with two models, and now here come the P-4s to support. Commando's here to challenge the Falsham Pioneers. More infantry coming out in the rear. LMG commandos hop in the building. Other commandos push up. Crusaders doing some damage to the P4. LMG commandos forced to retreat at the risk of going down. Very, very low health. One squad of Falsham Pioneers gets knocked out. Other commandos forced to retreat. And these Crusaders just doing a lot of damage to this Axis infantry. Canamix throws his one squad of Jaeger Shreks in the building, which is really smart. Makes them more durable, and they're able to get off shots much faster against these British tanks. Now Canamix has unlocked the Stuka Loiter, which is one of the best uh, endgame battle group abilities available. Primarily because it targets vehicles and infantry. Again, Cephas uses the naval blockade uh, to prevent some of the capping 
Oh, it's not on a specific point anymore. It's designed to keep... Yep, right now he's frozen to central VP, so he'll be able to keep VP pressure at least stable. Now, Crusaders challenging P4s. And you would think the P4s would win this engagement, especially with the Jaeger Trex in support. Oh. But this Crusaders hit hard. Uh, good AoE damage against infantry. A third P4 headed out now. And this is, honestly, this is the weakness of the Luftwaffe battle group. Is just the heaviest AT vehicle you can get is a P4. So against British late game, that can be very challenging. All right, and both sides repairing their vehicles. Interested to see what Cephas does here. His full health crusader is going to challenge these infantry over here. One squad of Jaeger checks available. If he's not careful, he could get... Yep. He gets Faustid and then a, a Shrek hits. But doesn't cause an engine crit. Now MG moves up, starts suppressing the infantry. And the Crusader able to back off. A little bit concerning for Cephas here. Because now you have three Panzer IVs on the field versus only two Crusaders. M map control relatively even, uh, but slightly in Cephas' favor. Jaeger's dodge a grenade. LMG commando is getting focused down by the Stoss Troopin. Sniper takes one commando, and the sniper is in a great position to do a lot of damage. And now the commando is forced to retreat as well. Crusader's going to force the issue here with the P4s. And they chunk down one relatively quickly. Oh, it's almost gone, but it'll back up. And now they focus. I wonder if he's gotten the armored vehicle training. It seems like their rate of fire has increased significantly. Maybe it's the double vet. Infantry section capping on the periphery. Uh, finds the third Panzer IV. Sep is now knocking out these garrisons to prevent the Shreks from being able to use them. Triple Sapper is going to repair this Crusader. Oh, infantry section takes a lot of damage, but does succeed in distracting uh, Canamix's large force. Canamix almost pop capped now at 93 of 100. So he'll be able to bank up quite a bit of fuel uh, and manpower and potentially replace losses if he dives uh, unsuccessfully with the P4. Crusaders, a nice answer to this. Good balance of AT with the upgraded six-pounder gun, and they still have great AoE damage against infantry. Plus, their mobility makes them really effective on this map. So I think this is a good call from Seppis to use a couple of them by something like a Matilda. Matilda would have a harder time penetrating the P4 frontally. Sniper comes out, uh, unsupported at the moment, knocks out one sapper, and the sappers immediately move to the rear to take cover. Now Crusaders pushing on the infantry in the south run into the Jaeger tracks and are forced to back up. Well, sniper forced to retreat. We are losing control of a sector. Jaeger tracks retreat as well. And the Crusaders are gonna pull back to lick their wounds. Beginning research as ordered. We have secured the location. Victory points of balance. We now so he has he does have the infantry training. Seppis has the infantry training and the armored vehicle training. So you're starting to see that advantage on the sappers, you're seeing that advantage on the crusaders, and then obviously the, the commanders as well are gonna benefit from this. And he's just upgraded Grant, so now you're gonna see first Grant on the way. And I think these P4s are gonna struggle to deal with the Grant. The Grant is really in a great spot right now. Oh, it's really powerful. I don't know that I necessarily agree with how it's balanced right now, but it is a great, great asset for the Brits to have in the late game. Does great infantry damage, does great penetration even to heavier vehicles like the Tiger. Uh, and with the two guns, can chew through infantry and team weapons very quickly. And here we go for Canamix. He's got his three P4s on the flank, supported by infantry. They find a single Crusader. 
and immediately take away half of its health. The second Crusader moves in to join. Oh, P3s or P4s whiff a couple of shots here. Armored skirt upgrade, so they'll have a little bit additional health. Vickers here is going to suppress the infantry. Now the Crusader pushes up. Oh, Vickers getting chunked down. This Crusader about to go down. Yep, it actually goes down to a combination of GB39 in the Shrek. Vickers taking some damage as well. But now here comes the Rocket Loiter. And it's going to force these P4s back, but doesn't do a lot of damage. Infantry section does knock out a squad of Falsham Pioneers and forces a sniper to retreat. Oh, but the P4s do a lot of damage in return to the infantry. Oh, a rocket run hitting these P4s well outside the circle. It's another frustration with the loiter, which I'm sure we've all experienced. Oh, Grant chunks down the Jaegers. And you see Seppis' strategy at this point. He's got a triple cap on. Canamix down to less than 100 VPs. And his P4s have taken a lot of damage. And with that rocket loader overhead, he's really unable to challenge. Crusader moves up and finds the P4s. Takes a bunch of damage for its trouble. But now here the Grant is going to press. Now it thinks better of it and backs up. At this point... Seppis just needs to not lose. Not lose a number of armored vehicles. Not lose a sapper squad, which goes down to the sniper. Uh, with the three VPs, it's not necessarily about pushing Kanemix off the map at this point, so much as it is making sure he can maintain at least a VP advantage uh, and continue to tick things down. Kanemix, he's got... Uh, Quite high pop cap still or supply at 91, but he's losing his ability to spread out as the Panzer Pi or Falsham Pioneers are knocked out. Here are the LMG commandos. The sniper backs off, and they're just gonna dive this VP to prevent, uh, prevent it from being capped. They're eventually forced off. But that VP advantage is going to continue to tick down for Canamax. He's able to cap the center here. And he'll he'll cap the north side here shortly. Meanwhile, Seppis backed up in his base, uh, repairing all of his units. He got Canamax down to 17 VPs, but we've all seen games turn at this point. If you're not able to just recover and pick one VP... Uh, and get that cap advantage back. He doesn't need to hold it for very long, but he does need to hold it. Falsham Pioneers are going to top off the health on these P4s. Second Grant coming out now. And the Grant, uh, at this stage in the game, going to do much better against the P4s with the infantry and support uh, than the Crusaders will. That should keep you going a bit longer. Longer. Capture the location. So Canamex consolidating a little bit, trying to top off his resources. He's got the Stuka Loiter uh, is available. I'm pretty sure it's 180. Maybe it's 200 munitions now. I thought it was 180. And so that can really turn an engagement too. If he's able to get to use like a flare or something to set that up in the rear, especially with the weird retreat paths on this map. If you set up that Loiter here, once Seppis is uh you know committed to the center for an engagement you could really do a lot of damage and swing the game your way here we go Seppis using a flare he's going to highlight the sniper here right and here come the p4s oh infantry section force retreat immediately taking a lot of damage crusader pushing off the sauce trooping and now here we're about to see a showdown between these two grants. Some infantry support. Oh. Infantry section occupies the garrison. Jaeger's at risk, and here comes the Stuka Loiter. Oh, the Jaegers will get away. Grants forced back. Oh. First Strafe does a lot of damage to the, the one Grant. Except he's gonna pull out of the targeting circle. Oh man, one grant, I think it goes down. And 
some good push here by Kanemix. So not only does he have the center, he's going to lay in some mines. That Stuka Lawyer is going to keep Seppis pushed back into his base uh, for at least another 20 seconds. And Seppis has a couple of sappers, but no minesweepers. Now Kanemix taking advantage of it to cap up resources on the north side of the map. And he's going to start pushing on Seppis' final fuel point here. Crusader's going to go out to challenge these infantry. Meanwhile, Kanemix setting up a defensive position under the, the watchful eyes of the Stukas. Oh, wow. And I guess the, uh... The LMG commandos went down uh, because the Falsham Makers have picked up that Vickers K, which is an awesome LMG. If you guys have watched Will the Noob's uh, channel, he yet did a video on a number of LMGs. Vickers K is one of the better ones in the game. All right, Stuka Loiter expires. Panzer IV is relocating. Commandos dropping in on the north uh, VP here. And so I think... Does Kanemix see it? If Seppis can hold with these commandos and cap this northern VP, that pressure might be enough to win the game, even though, from a combat perspective, he's definitely at a disadvantage right now. He's going to have a hard time just getting out of his base be between the mines and the Jaeger Shreks here. Seppis has his mortars on hold fire. All right, here comes commandos. The Stoss Troop and Trigger their Vet 1 ability. Uh, and they're forced off, but they do a lot of damage to the commandos in time. Oh, these sappers are done. Annihilated. Now, diff additional infantry pushing force off the triple vet commandos, but Sep able to capture the north side VP. And there's some risk here. If Kanemix doesn't react fast enough, uh, he's going to capture the south side VP here. Sep is going to push with the grant. Hits a mine and gets an engine crit. Crusader is trying to protect uh, the capture of the North VPs. Oh, three Panzer IVs here. And Crusader doing some funky pathing. Oh no, it goes down. Seppis calls GG. Oh, he gets the double cap up. I could have sworn that Kanemix was going to cap that up. <laughs> Seppis is bro, the VP. I think Seppis realizes he can't win this game except on VPs. Sniper's trying to cap it. Commandos go down holding the VP. But is this going to tick out? Oh my goodness. So Kanemix loses on VPs despite Seppis basically admitting defeat. Man, that was, that was wild. Alright everyone. So as always, we're going to start with the build order, and I've added some of the key tech decisions so you can see how the players are using some of their additional resources and the timing involved with that. So starting with good old Seppis, again playing as the Brit Air and Sea Battle Group, he starts with two sappers, then gets his section command post out, uh, gets a mortar, a couple of infantry sections, and a dingo before getting his platoon command post. Then he uses a commando call-in, uh, builds a Vickers HMG, Gets his field infirmary for healing in the base. Then he goes for the LMG commandos, uh, the grenade package on his infantry, a six pounder AT gun, before finally teching up to tier four. He gets a crusader too. He gets the armored vehicle training, an additional squad of sappers, a second crusader. Then he goes for the infantry training, unlocks his grants, uh, and gets a couple grants as well as team weapon training. And then obviously the commando squad there at the end of the match. Meanwhile, for Canamix, playing as the Wehrmacht Luftwaffe battle group, He's going to go with Pioneers. He selects the Luftwaffe battle group and immediately deploys some Falschirm Pioneers. Then he gets a Kettenkraut out and two additional Falschirm Pioneer squads before he even builds his infantry company, the Tier 1. He immediately then builds a Tier 2 uh, and gets the med station upgrade for his headquarters before building some Jaegers, pulling in a squad of Falschirm Jaegers, and then going straight to Tier 4, the Panzer Company. Uh, after that, he gets an additional squad of Jaegers, a Sniper, and starts his build of P4s. He ends up with three of them. Uh, gets a squad of Stoss Troop and a third squad of Jaegers out, and late in the game, upgrades the side skirts on his tanks. All right, everyone. So helping me break down the match tonight is Seppis, uh, the surprise winner of the match. Sepp, how are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing fine. Can wake up early tomorrow, but yeah, I'm here for the interview. Yeah, I appreciate so, you, you staying up late. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. 
Hey, so uh, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions here, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, your opponent and kind of how the game went. But uh, the first thing, and I, I mentioned this in the cast, I really dislike uh, the map Samoa. Um, but you've been around for a while. Samoa has been around for a while. When you see the map, you know, Samoa is loading in uh, and you're Brits against Wehrmacht, like, how does that affect your build order, uh, your capping order? How do you think about the map? Well, Samoa is kind of a... Uh, one part of it is very open, namely the, the western parts. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking about getting a dingo, but I got that one pretty late. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, I don't think about it that much. <laughs> uh, I just think that Brits don't have too much capping power in the beginning, so I just try to get two, two Royal Engineer squads to get that capping power against uh, a Wehrmacht player. Mm -hmm. can get a cut, cut and round out. That's pretty much the only thing that I think about. Okay. Some, sometimes on the map, there might be a building that's like important. It's like you can set up an MG in and pretty much win the early game. Deny a field point or something like that. But Samoa... Eh, yeah, I, I saw that you... much like that. There's the... Each, each side has a garrison kind of on the other side's exit, right? And at one point in the mid-game, you had pushed up and you put a Vickers in that garrison. So it wasn't the early game. So that allowed you to put a lot of pressure and kind of stall uh, Canamix out as he was trying to leave his base. Um, the This oh, yeah. version of the map has, has opened up a little bit from the previous version. So uh, now the extreme flanks also have crossing points on the water. Uh, but yeah, the middle uh, with the pond uh, for both sides, the middle creates some really weird like retreat paths and choke points, uh, which I I, I think we saw it play out later in the game, but yeah, so your your response double royal engineers just to kind of get moving that makes sense and then obviously the next follow up is you immediately see false pioneers come in uh, a couple oh, yeah. squads of them so then does that change your perspective on things at all or that change your approach i mean uh, i mean, i immediately saw the uh, i i immediately thought that he was gonna go for the for the cutoff there mm -hmm. for the in the city, mm -hmm. so I put, okay, he's gonna put up an emplacement. It's gonna do a meta thing, mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna get a mortar immediately to respond to that. And I also also think that fortune pioneers are kind of vulnerable to mortar because you usually see them in like in, in green cover. Mm -hmm. As when you have a mortar, you can just dislodge them from that green cover. And, you know, their their uh their large firepower becomes. Does not become that much of a, uh, that much of a threat to, you yeah. Once their game, once their game over. Yeah, they're a, a pretty decent like glass cannon style unit. Um, they be get they get really frustrating when they start to vet up and they get the grenade launcher. But yeah, early game if oh, you yeah. can if you can whittle down their numbers or knock their DPS down, suddenly a lot of your engagements become a lot more favorable. I know early on you had an infantry section. And Falchion Pioneers standing toe to toe on that fuel point next to your base, and the Falchion Pioneers actually won that one, um, which some people might think is a little silly. Both units, you know, uh, not in cover, just standing there shooting. But that's just kind of the mm. state of the balance as it is right now. Yeah, the, the rifles pack a punch. <laughs> yeah, I I saw the yeah I saw the I tried to counter them with one infantry section on my mm -hmm. fuel point, and I, I I don't see that that often. So I thought, okay, I'm going to try this. To see if there's a, like a one-to-one -one fight, and it it really wasn't, you know, because I, I should have brought like two sections there. Did you think about uh, you eventually got the vickers out? Uh, did you think about getting it a little sooner? Uh, once I saw the blob uh, of falcon pioneers, I <laughs> immediately thought, okay, I need I need the vickers right now. And yeah, that that was the was the point. I went to get it. Okay, and then uh, we talked about this a little bit. The, the lack of like mid game or light vehicle play. So, uh, Brits, some Brit players, you know, roll dingoes into Humbers into Stewarts and they can kind of snowball their opponent. Um, you basically waited, you leveraged infantry and then the commanders from the battle group uh, until you got into your tier four uh, and getting the Crusaders out. Um, is there a reason you did that rather than playing uh, heavier with light vehicles in the middle of the game? Uh, I actually don't do like vehicles because I'm kind of bad with them. I actually lose them pretty early. Um, I like used to tanks being ta uh, taking more hits, mm -hmm. but I can see the light vehicles. They can like uh, 
they can uh, they can quite surprise an opponent, and the opponent, if he does not have a immediate reaction, he's going to be off the field for like two minutes, I would say. But yeah. I was I was I would be getting the light vehicle very late, so I thought, okay, I'm not going to do the light vehicle. I'm going to skip because this guy is probably going to get a an Ostwind out, and you know it's probably not going to be going to be the best course of action. Also an AT gun or something. So I, I was pretty late on light vehicles, so I thought, let's not do them. Let's just go straight for the tanks. Yeah, and so your use of the Crusaders was really nice. Uh, and I think about Crusaders as kind of upgun stewards. Um, I think, right, obviously you saw the Jaegers come out. So the, the Fallstrom Jaegers have uh, the Panzer Faust that they can use. The Jaegers, one of the squads had Shreks. Eventually there, there were three of them on the field. Uh, normally for me, I see Jaegers, I think, all right, Warble wins coming out next. Um, I'm pretty sure, you know, one Stuart versus one Warble, if you don't consider their vet abilities, the Stuart probably wins that. Uh, two Stuarts could probably eat up a Warble wind. But I think you're right, especially in that map with all the sight blockers uh, and, you know, the false Jaegers being able to camouflage. I think the risk of getting ambushed, getting your, your Stuart snared, and then getting it run down um maybe makes that a little bit less of a good investment and you're like we were talking about your early crusader play really really nice until the end of the game and then suddenly it wasn't and, and they started to get caught out a little bit which i mean that happens yeah. the center of that map uh is just an absolute mess with all the garrisons um and the site blockers and really kind of difficult to manage so still uh really good play there and and once you got the crusaders on the field you did a great job countering the P4s and getting a lot of map control that I think ultimately uh, won you the game. I don't think I killed. I don't think I killed any of the P4s, did I? No, you didn't. But you kept pushing them off. You did enough yeah. damage that they, for a long time, they couldn't be used effectively, and that gave you the map control that you needed. Um, I, you know, the the one question that I I kind of ask, like, is there anything you would do differently? Obviously, you won, but by the skin of your teeth i think you're about ready to concede uh when you end up winning oh, yeah. vps so what would oh, you yeah. have, what would you have changed so i went for a grant because the grant was like a, a holy grail of of the bridge light game mm -hmm. but i should probably should have gone for two crusaders maybe three crusaders then mm -hmm. like i got i had to tech up and get two grants and they were kind of slow and bulky mm -hmm. and, you know, you got the Jaegers against you, you got three Panzer Fours against you. Maybe, and you know, the map is very wide, very open, so maybe so maybe Crusaders could like cruise the map a bit better, like a, a pack of four Crusaders or something like that. So I should have probably gone for that. Yeah, I, I also wonder uh, the Centaur, right? The call-in uh, a little bit mm. earlier. Obviously, CPs probably were an issue for timing. But with he had so much infantry on the field, Centaur is not going to help very much with the P4s, but it might have helped kind of knock back uh, the Jaeger Shreks or the Falsham Jaegers and give your maybe give your AT gun some room to breathe. It eventually got knocked out, obviously. Mm. I, I would say I think the meta solution is is Grants. I think the difference is you really needed to keep them together. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when you, you ended up kind of committing them piecemeal and then got got smashed by the the Luftwaffe loiter uh and I once you once you're down to one grant and one crusader now you don't have the mass that you need to push back on three, oh, yeah. three p4s but if you had gotten two you know those two grants fighting together maybe a third I think then you just start to chew through the the axis infantry um yeah I didn't uh the centaur I don't it, it's pretty often over overlooked even mm -hmm. by me and I saw Okay, he's got three tanks. I need three tanks, of, three tanks like like P4s of my own. Mm -hmm. and Central might help me with wiping some of his infantry because I was struggling on wipes. Mm -hmm. As in, I, my infantry got wiped pretty often, mm -hmm. and I probably should have also kept them alive better. So Centaur, if I, if I managed to keep his P4s at bay, Centaur might have been a good idea. Yeah, it's not as mobile as the Crusaders, so it could go either way. It was just something I was thinking about, you know, once you committed to the battle group. Um, honestly, I thought that was the biggest weakness in Canamix's uh, build, is the Luftwaffe battle group doesn't have that, like, late-game armor. So the only thing he can really rely on is the P4, which, 
Now, obviously it does fine in most fights, especially when you get them in mass, but it's not a panther, it's not a tiger. Um, and so they can start to struggle against the heavier British armor without that, that kind of late game anti-tank. Uh, the last thing I, I want to ask you, just because the ending of that game was wild, you actually called GG, and like I said, it looked like you were about to capitulate uh, when you called the commando squad in on the Northern VP. So what was going through your mind? Uh, oh, yeah. I, so at that time, I had one Crusader, one Grand. Okay, I can still do this. I can still <laughs> win the game. It's like 10 VPs. Mm -hmm. So I ran. I just went forward with the Grand. It hit, hit a mine immediately. <laughs> Yeah. So I said, okay, yeah, this is done. So uh, I can't push anymore. This guy's got three P4s. Yeah, I, I cannot win this. I can, like, defend the right VP a bit. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, then, you know, something, like, flicks through my mind. Maybe I can at least drop commandos on the other VP. And it worked somehow, you know, just keep fighting until the end. I, I didn't hear no bell. So the story. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was funny. He, so he he pushed your commandos off the southern VP. He had the sniper capping it, and then he just stopped. And oh yeah, and I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know why. I wish I could ask him about it. I'm sure it was just a momentary lapse where he didn't realize that you were capping the other side of the map with the commandos until it was too late. But you know, he only had I think 17 VPs. Yeah, and so it doesn't take long uh, for those to tick down all the way. So uh pretty pretty exciting finish um i did not see it coming i was me like neither. i was like me man neither, good on set for sending me a, <laughs> a game that he lost <laughs> i thought like uh, i think it was a combination of two two things one that he was we were both exhausted so mm -hmm. he kind of missed micro that he he like sent the full champagne squad who was or sniper who was supposed to cap the vp Mm -hmm. Send them somewhere else, out of out of exhaustion. He just did not see. Uh, he just did, he just did not realize they were supposed to cap, and maybe it's because of the battle. He also did not see the commandos land mm -hmm. again. Exhaustion, maybe. So yeah, yeah, that played in, played in my favor. Luckily, I know. Uh, you know, if Ares was here, he would say, "Well, if he was using his tack map, he would have seen it." <laughs> um, hmm. But yeah, that that can be tough, and like you said, it was a you know thirty five minute game. It starts to wear on you a little bit after a while. Um, mm -hmm. For yeah. uh, for for Canamix, I, I have a couple of of thoughts here. So the first thing that I really liked is he had a a pretty nice mix of infantry. Uh, so he had three Falchion Pios, he had a Falchion Jaeger squad. He ended up with three squads of Jaegers. He has Stoffstrippen squad. And I thought he did a really good job, oh, plus the sniper, right? So he, he did a really good job of, like, keeping them spread out uh, and keeping them in places where they were, like, kind of the best unit for that particular fight. Uh, he did a good job of the, keeping the falls from Jaegers in cover so they get the ambush bonus. Um, the sniper play I thought was excellent. Really, the, the only critique that I had of his infantry play was I don't think he used enough of the utility that the falls from Pioneers give you uh, in terms of like mines and stuff like that, mm -hmm. he he laid some aggressive mines, but I think he might have been able to close the deal earlier um, if he had placed some mines in kind of his rear areas and caught out your crusaders, you know, five or ten minutes before he actually did, because mm -hmm. they were driving all over the map wreaking havoc. Uh, and a, and a well placed mine kind of on rear retreat paths can go a long way to helping you, you know, corner a vehicle like that. Uh, the next thing is. Uh, he only got one Luftwaffe loiter off, but man, he made it count. Um, did a really nice job kind of forcing you, uh, like letting you take the engagement, then dropping the loiter behind you. And because of the way the map is set up, uh, really starts to wear on you and, and burn down your grants pretty, pretty good. So, you know, knocked out one and you only get the other one uh, and then immediately hits a mine. So like I said, it the combination of that, like that's something you see the best players do is they use the battle group abilities to kind of flip engagements their direction. So, uh, mm. yeah, pretty impressed with that. I kind of wish that I also threw, like, threw a loiter of my own, actually. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, like, no damage at all, because the rockets are kind of harder to aim or something, I suppose. Yeah, I, I think it was maybe a little bit too far out, right? And so he he was able maybe. to pull his P4s back and out of the out of the targeting ring 
um, into that field on kind of the north side of the map in between the two VPs. If you had gotten to drop the loiter just a little bit deeper, then I think maybe he has to like either mm. pull all the way back into his base or he gets caught on that little bridge there and takes a lot more damage. Mm. But yeah, yeah, the rocket the rocket loiter is decent. The Luftwaffe loiter is the best one in the game, right? It damages vehicles, it suppresses and damages infantry. Uh, you know, personally, I'm a little frustrated with the the skill planes mechanic. I would love to see, you know, a bunch of different strafes as an option rather than a you know click button to win engagement thing. But um, you know, every battle group has its kind of like end game uh, skill or ability. So that's one that that really helps carry the Luftwaffe battle group. Well, the problem with strafes is that they're, they take too long mm -hmm. to get somewhere, and they, they often miss. Yeah, I'm not sure if some of them are good because I don't use them because you know they're they just they just take too long. They they could go with the war game model, so you can call the aircraft on like into the battlefield into the airspace, and then direct it like another unit until it's either uh, you know runs out of fuel. Um, it takes too much damage or gets shot down or you tell it to leave. Mm -hmm. I think that might be, it's, you know, much more micro heavy, but you could see some really kind of interesting play and counterplay. Um, mm -hmm. Probably not going to see that in Co 3, hopefully in, in Co 4, uh, that could be a, yeah. an interesting mechanic. I can only hope in like <laughs> 10 years, maybe. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, the really the last thing I had for Canamex, he had some interesting tech choices, right? So, um, he got the Luftwaffe company out, and then and rather than tech up to get the Whirlwind, he pretty much immediately went to the Panzer company and a P4. Uh, and I, I wonder, because you didn't have Stewart's, you only had the one AT gun, you didn't have a lot of AT early, if, again, maybe a Whirlwind allows him to kind of push you off just a little bit more, get aggressive, and take a little bit of more, little bit more mid-game map control, that ends up you know, ending the game on VPs uh, before you could really build up that mass. Um, was there anything else that you were worried he would do? I was worried he was going to finish me off in the <laughs> early mid game because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of struggling on fuel. Uh, mm -hmm. This guy has, has got fuel for like, I don't know, for like seven minutes or eight minutes. He has a decent fuel control. Yeah. So, uh oh, there's, a, there's an Ostwind <laughs> uh, rubble wind coming or something like that. Yeah. So he, he didn't get it. I think it was a. I, I got lucky that he got like uh, comfortable, and he did not uh, push me with a with a light vehicle or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, and it's really hard to tell because obviously you don't see the whole map. You don't see what your opponent's doing. Sometimes it'd be really hard to tell. Like you can see in the replay. Oh, if he just pushed here, he could win mm. the game with one good push. But you don't know when you're playing, and so if you're a little too conservative, you end up giving your opponent room to get back into the game. It's the power of recon, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Sep, I don't have any other questions. Is there anything that you had uh, that you wanted to add? Keep fighting until until the end, kids. <laughs> Pays yeah. off. Yeah, as you said, I didn't hear no bell. <laughs> I gotta <laughs> find that Randy Marsh meme before I publish this. Um, well, yeah, thanks again, man. Thanks for staying up late. Thanks for uh, sending the replay. And I uh, look forward to posting this one. Thanks for having me, man. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, that's all for us. And we'll see you in the next one.